Hi guys, it's Promise Horizon here again with another awesome Blender tutorial. Okay, so if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as I drop awesome Blender content like this every week. Okay, so you could check out my course as well on Udemy to comprise everything you need to learn about Blender animation, sculpting, and modeling. Okay, so back to Blender here. The link to the course is in the description link, so you could check it out there and get going as a 3D artist. So back to blender here so there are many ways you could rig a character but the two basic ways is with bones or then you lock the transformation so i'm going to be taking you through the two of them and then the best one to use is the bones and you're going to be knowing why at the end of this tutorial so the both of these um robot arms now this three this third one now is actually not rigged but this two one is rigged now so the both of them we do the same transformation that is, they can move and the can, can animate the both of them so but for me to animate this one i need to go over to pose mode so if i left click on the bone now i have to click on my modes here to pose mode now so any of the bone i move now will actually move the mesh as well so if i left click on this one arrow to rotate so it will rotate the mesh here if i left click on this one arrow to rotate so it will rotate the teeth on this one so the same is the same the same is gonna happen to this one but then i have to head back to object mode now this one i don't need to move to pose mode i just select the teeth here arrow to rotate it rotate and then because i've rigged it i've locked the actual transformation the transformations that need to be locked and the axis so if i arrow to rotate this one to rotate there then if i left click on this one arrow to rotate it to rotate as well why you need to rig with bones is because if we animate this now so let's say we try to animate this let's head over to the animation workspace so i'm on the animation workspace now so i'll zoom in a little bit on this now so we can pan through this now so you're going to be seeing the side view of this now so let me press and hold my middle mouse button and then pan through here and then zoom in by scrolling in now so i'll box select the whole mesh now then i add keyframe now with my cursor in the scene here then i'm going to select location and ro rotation so it's going to add the location and rotation keyframe now it has added the keyframe so we'll move over to probably 24 frames and then we're going to perform some actions probably let's click on the this the the upper arm and then rotate it a little bit and then the teeth as well we can rotate the head here arrow to rotate it now a little bit now and then the teeth as well we kind of bend it now and then this one will kind of actually bend it a little bit and then let's click on this one arrow to bend this one now so now i will select all the whole mesh again now and then click i again add a keyframe location and rotation so if i take this marker now if i take it back and bring it forward now so you see it's going to perform the action i just did so if we just play this now so you're going to see if i on the space key on my keyboard now so you see it, it plays the animation now so let's say I want to copy this exact animation I did here to the 48 frame now. So we'll take this our marker to the 48 frame now. Let's say I want to copy this exact animation to the 48 frame. How do you do it? You select, you make sure that all the whole mesh is selected as well. So you go and left click on the frame you want to copy. So it selects all the whole keyframes now. So once you control C now to copy that keyframe, and then you can control V to paste it or shift control V to paste flip version of it but anyone you do will not work if you rig your character this way so if i control v now to paste the keyframe you're going to see what i'm getting now so i'm kind of getting some weird deformation on this mesh now you see this one has gone here this one has gone here so if i take this slider back and then bring it back so you see what is happening i can't copy this keyframe with this pattern of rigging but then if i rigged it with this bone now i can do that that's why it's best to rig with bones now so now i'm going to control see and i'm back to what i had before so now we are going to be going over to the bone version now so this bone one is not actually animated so now i will head over to my pose mode now let's click on object mode pose mode so i'll select one of the bones first let's add a keyframe to all the whole stuff so i will left click and hold and then drag down to kind of box select all the whole bones now and then i'm going to click i or i can click all now to select all the whole bones because i'm in pose mode so it's all the whole bones here i'm going to select if I click I now, location and rotation, I'll left click on it, and then it inserts my first set of keyframe at the zero frame. So if I take this marker to the 24th frame, and then I can move this now, left click on this one, arrow to bring this here, and then left click on this one to kind of bring it now, and left click on the other bone, arrow to kind of rotate it now. So now I'll click A to select all of them, or I can box select, like left click and hold and drag my mouse down to cover up all the whole bones now. And then i'm going to click i with my cursor on the scene if you keep your cursor here and click i you're not going to get the inside keyframe so your cursor has to be on your scene here 
So I'll click I now and then click on location and rotation have inserted a keyframe. So if I take this back now and then bring it for so you see it does the action for me. And then if I click A now to select all the whole bones now and then let click on this set of keyframes now at the 24th frame. And then if I control C now it copies that frame. And then if I take it to the 48th frame, I can paste flip, I can paste the actual key keyframe. That's the normal frame. So control V now. So you see, I've pasted that keyframe now. So what it has is the same action here. So, but for you to see a different action, I can paste flip control Z now. Let me paste flip shift control V now. So it's adding an opposite variant of this keyframe now. So now if I take back now and then take here, when it gets when it gets there, it's going to do the opposite version of what it has. So now I can copy keyframe without having to deform the mesh. Why this is really important if you're animating work cycles, most times you just have to do two animations and then the rest you just have to copy and then you paste the flip version so now i can copy and paste the flip so that is why this one is very essential so let me take you through on how to rig this with the bone variant not this one to lock the transformation is just when you make sure that your cursor is on this at the center of the mass of wherever mesh so this mass now where we want this one to rotate now where we want this other one to rotate is here at the center so the origin here might not be at the center there so what we just have to do is head over to let's click on that mesh head over to edit mode now so we want this one now to pivot here now so what is selected here is this ball so assuming i left click here the ball is no longer selected if i click l now the ball is not selected what i just have to click now is shift x now and then it brings all these options now so you could see selection to grid but the one that is very important is this two which is Kuso to selected and then selection to Kuso. So this one brings this one to this side. This one does the opposite. So the 8 is the opposite of 2. If I click Shift S now, and then click 2 now. It will now bring my Kuso to the center of mass of this now, where I want this one to pivot. And then if I click 8 now, 8 will now take this ball to the Kuso. So that's why I told you the opposite of it. So now I can now exit now to object mode and select this mesh now. And then right click now. And then head over to set origin now to this set origin and then the origin to 3d kuso so the origin will now be on this 3d kuso so now if i want to arrow to rotate this now it's going to be rotating on the origin where i want it to pivot so that is just the idea behind this one so the one of rigging with bones is just so easy it's the same idea you just have to keep your origin make sure that your origin is where it is so the origin of this one is at the center of mass which is here if your origin is not here what you just have to do is head over to edit mode now and then you can use L to select. This is the base of this whole pipe here. So this is the base, and this is where we want the origin to be. So what we can do now, since it's not linked, if you click L, it's selecting all of them, we can use the Y plane view now, and then or C now to head over to X-ray mode. Then we'll box select from here now. Make sure we select everything. So if I or Z now to exit X-ray mode, now you can see you can see the box is not selected. So you click shift x now and then two to bring the cursor to the center of mass of this now and then you can head back to object mode now and then select this mesh as a whole and then right click set origin to the 3d cursor where the 3d cursor is so now this cursor is now in the origin of this now then now we can bring our bone or wherever we want to add to the center of mass of this which is from this origin if i click the y plot view now and then shift a now head over to one then single bone and you see it has this bone to the origin and then if i x to scale can scale it as little as small as i want it so what you want always want to do when you add a bone is head over to the bone this amateur icon here and then head over to viewport display this kind of amateur here and then click on in front make sure it's checked so the bone will always be in front of the mesh is very very important so now we head over to the edit mode to kind of extrude that all these bones so are preferred size so G to grab this Z and then constrain it to the Z axis. Somewhere here is where I want it to pivot, but then I'm actually going to constrain it to the center of mass there as well. So it will extrude now Z and then extrude out the bone that is going to be here. So G and then Z to grab it up a little bit. So what we can do now is make sure that this bone is at the center of mass of this other one. So I'll click on object mode again, select this mesh now. Select the pipe one, not the bone. I want to select the bone is covering up everything. So this is the one I want to select over to the edit mode now so look at where we want this one to pivot we want it to pivot at the center of mass of this one as well so we we'll put our origin or the origin of this one there as well so what we can do now is head over to object mode select this one as well 
head over to edit mode now so click l select just this mesh and then shift x now and then two now to bring the origin that's the 3d cursor to the center of mass of this mesh here this one actually so now i will zip this now to object mode now and then select this mesh now then right click now set origin to 3d cursor so i want the origin of this mesh i just selected to the 3d cursor so the origin will now be on the 3d cursor so if i try to rotate or any transformation will now be from this origin because this is set to origin and origin is where it's always set to if you want to rig or animate anything it, it starts this transformation from the origin so now this is what i have now so now i can click on this bone now and then i can click on the object first and then hold shift and click on the bone and then head over to edit mode now and then if i select this bone now then head over to armature now i cannot get to snap this bone to the 3d cursor so if i select the armature i can click on snapping and then snap selection to cursor so the bone now will not snap to this 3d cursor you see nothing happened because i, I actually aligned it very well so most times you might align your bone very well and you don't have to snap it so now it's actually aligned very well so what we need to do now now this one is snapped very well is extrude another bone from the right here Okay, click on this one now. Use the white flat view now. Okay, click on the top bone there. It will screw the screw that bone here. So I'm going to disconnect this bone now. So what I can do is Alt P now, then disconnect the bone and make sure it's disconnected. G to grab X now, and then bring it out a little bit. X to scale it and then G to grab. Now right click now, duplicate ships D and then X now to bring it here. So it's connecting this other one now. So this is just the arrangement we need now. So we'll see the side view and see whether it's correct now. So if it's not snapped to the center of mass, we can do the same thing to this one by just heading over to object mode now and then select this other mesh now. So this one is the origin is at the center of mass. So if yours is not at the center of mass, all you just need to do head over to edit mode now. So you can use link now to select this ball. We want this stuff now to rotate at the center here. That means if we do if we click on this now then arrow to rotate and then z so that it's going to be rotating from that origin and that's the center of mass that's where we want it assuming the origin let me just click n now and then head over to two now if i click affect origins now and then probably drag this origin i keep here now so if i try to rotate this now you see let me uncheck this affect origin now and then end to take this in now so if I try to rotate this now, so you see where it's starting to rotate, even though I make it as Z, so you see where it's rotating. So the origin affects where it's going to rotate from. That's why we are always taking the origin to the center of mass. So it's going to rotate from the center of mass. So if yours is not here, what you can do is just head over to edit mode again. I will either select link, which is this one now. Then if it doesn't select the link, you can use side view and then box select just this one. Or try a way to select the top of this and then select the bottom so once you click shift s it's also going to bring it to the center here the origin or the kuso because that is the center of this now so if we select the top of this now and then hold shift now and select the bottom round so if we press shift s and two it will also bring the origin to the center here so let me just click l now then shift x now and then two to bring my kuso at the center of my of this so if i head over to object mode and then right click set origin to 3d cursor so the origin will come to the 3d cursor here so if i click the bone now if i click the object effects and then the bone second and then head over to edit mode now then make sure that the bone is snapping here so i could click amateur and then snap the bone to the 3d cursor so my own is actually perfect here so no need to snap it again so that's just what you need to do so now we'll read this now what we we'll now do is parent the whole bone to the mesh now so I'm going to select start from the lower arm here, which is the first arm now. So we'll select the bone first and then hold shift and then select the mesh. So I think I'm in edit mode already. So I will zip edit mode to object mode now. So I select the bone and, and I select the mesh first and then select the bone last. And head over to pose mode, not edit mode. So on pose mode now, select this bone that I want to prank this one to. That I want to prank this mesh now to. So what I can do is just click Ctrl P, Ctrl P now, parent with bone. So it's now parented to that bone now. So the same pattern now is what we are going to use to do all these other ones. So I'll head back to object mode now, select the mesh first, select the hold shift and then select the bone second and then Ctrl tab now to head straight to edit mode and then left click on that bone, Ctrl P now and then select bone now. So it's parented to that bone. So the same way we are go going to as well parent this one to this bone. 
because we want it to rotate with it as well so shift and select the bone control tab now and then to help her to pose more select the bone now then control p again select bone so it's parents to the bone now this one is printed to this bone and this other one is also printed to this bone so these ones will be printed to the the bones that the teeth now so I'll select object mode now hold on the teeth hold shift select on the bone now these bones then control tab again control tab again to head over to pose mode then select the bone there i want it to print to control p now and then to bone now so i'll do the same thing to this one as well so now if i hold in the pose mode now left click on that bone arrow to rotate it will now rotate left click on this one left click on this one now arrow to rotate it will now rotate now if i want to rotate on z axis arrow and then z now so to constrain it to the z axis so the ticks now if i rotate that bone it will rotate as well so the tick of this, of this one if i rotate now it will rotate as well so make sure you snap the bone like we snapped this one to the origin so make sure your own bone is snapping to the origin as well on this one so this was actually set so most times you don't need to snap to the origin if you snap one of the bone and then your whole mesh is actually aligned so you don't you just have to extrude them and constrain them to their the axis so they are actually aligned that is it okay so that is it about this so we are going to do i'm going to do a small animation with this now so i will select all of them now and then take my marker here to the zero there and then i to insert a keyframe location and rotation so i've inserted a keyframe there so i'm going to drag this now i'll drag it to 24 there and then i'm going to perform some actions now probably bend this one arrow to bend this somewhere like this then I will to rotate this one left click on the other bone i will to rotate to kind of bend it this way and then select all of them and then i and then insert another keyframe so if we take this back now and then play it now so it actually bent that way so that's how you create it so now we can actually copy the animation all we have to do is create a now to select all of the keyframes so i will take my marker to zero and then left click on the first keyframe on the zero so you select all those keyframe ctrl c copy it and then i can bring it here to the 48 keyframe there then ctrl v so what it will, it will do now is, is if it performs the action now so if i play if i keep my cursor on the dope sheet there and click play now if it perform the action it's going to come back as well so we can duplicate this now select all of them now then click a now to select all of these right click and then duplicate so we can duplicate this now and then drag it to somewhere here Kind of do a repetition of all this now it did now so it will go forth come back go forth again then come back okay so that's it about rigging and animating a robot um, so thanks for watching this awesome tutorial if you did enjoy don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button as i drop awesome content like this every week on my channel thanks for watching don't forget to check by the course see you on the next tutorial